Okay, our first problem here from IXO. We are given the angle 45 degrees. This is a right triangle and each I, which is this opposite side, this hypotenuse side, sorry, hypotenuse side, is three squared of 10. And they're asking us to find I, J. Find this side. So is this triangle a special triangle that we know about already? Is this a 30, 60, 90, or a 45, 45, 90? Okay, if it's a 45, 45, we have a special rule. To get from the side to the hypotenuse, it's always times square root of two. But to go backwards from the hypotenuse back to the side, what's the opposite of multiply? We do the opposite operation, so we divide by square root of two. So to come back to find ji, we take three square root of 10 and not multiply by square root of two, but divide by square root of two. Square roots, the rule is that square roots can always divide themselves. That becomes three square root of five. If one side is three square root of five, since it's a 45, 45, and they're isosceles, both sides are three square root of five. And just to double check, if I go from this side back to the hypotenuse, the circle of life, right? It's gonna be um, three square root of five times square root of two. That gives us three square root of 10, which is what we started off with. So just as a quick reminder, giving you another problem. If I give you a 45, 45 triangle, and I give you this, they call it six. Well, since it's 45, 45, we know the sides will be exactly the same. Those angles are the same, the sides are the same. And then the third side would be, the fast way is just to say six square root of two. We just multiply by square root of two. That was our pattern for all 45, 45 triangles. To follow up with this, um, if I wanna go backwards, opposite of multiply is divide. So if I say six square root of two divided by square root of two, we're back to six, where we started from. And being flexible and moving forward and backwards, that's one of the skills that we want to be able to do. So this can be six, um, whoops, not six, sorry, three, a square root, there's a square root symbol here, and we say this uh, five, I think. Yep. This problem looks quite terrible. I'm quite afraid of it. But I'm gonna just draw the triangle. 60, 200, sorry, two square root of 35. And this is a special triangle to me. Would you guys agree? Okay, saying 30, 60, 90. Now, this is what you always have to remember. Always start at your short side. Oops. This is our starting point. Oops, that's not short. Okay, so always start at the short side. This is our starting side. Because my easy problem was that if my short side was one, hypotenuse is always double, so that's two, and the long side is always times square root of three. So it's one square root of three, or just square root of three. And this was a pattern that we constantly had to like know. So if I give you a triangle, and I don't give you that to give you the short side, what if I give you the hypotenuse, we'll call this 10? Well, how is that related to the short side? Well, that means that's gonna be five. And then five square root of three. No work needed, right? We can just run with it, as long as you know the relationships. Now, where does this come from again? This comes from a 60, 60, 60 triangle. If all three angles are the same, what else would be the same? The sides. So if I call this 10, 10, and 10, okay? If I want to make this triangle look like this triangle, we would just cut it in half. So the 60 degrees becomes a 30 degrees. Look, 30, 60, 90. And the 10 becomes a five. That's why in for all 30, 60, 90 triangles, the short side is half the hypotenuse for this reason alone, because it's just half of a regular triangle. So what side was given here? Were we given the long, the short, or the hypotenuse? Hey, that's the hypotenuse. And we wanna go always back to the short side, not to the long side. This is bad. There's no fast way to get there. So to get from here back
Mr. Cole, you're muted. Okay, sorry for the interruption. Um, back to screen sharing. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so going back to this problem here, we want to go back to our short side. So back to our short side. So how is the short side related to the hypotenuse? The short side and the hypotenuse are just half of each other going backwards or double going forward. So half, two, square root of 35 divided in by two, that's just square root of 35. Now the side they want to solve for is DE. And that's the side we are at. Now, I just want to go forward. So, hey, what if I want to find this third side? The short side and long side as is related by square root of three. So I just write square root of three there. That becomes multiplying square root of 9105. Okay, so if they want you to fill out all three sides, that's what you're gonna do in today's homework today. You can fill out all three sides and angles. That's square root of 105. Let's see if it's gonna work. Oops, sorry, that's the wrong answer. They wanted um, DE, that's square root of 35. Oh, oh darn it. Well done, thank you, thought so. Now, I just wanna practice this last problem here. We're looking at a square root of 34. This is a 45 degree angle. Now, how is the 45 degree triangle, how is the hypotenuse and the leg related? Okay, and are we going forward or backwards? In my mind, I think of it as going forward. Going forward, we multiply by square root of two, but going backwards, we don't multiply. We then divide by square root of two. And since they're both square roots, you can divide them out. That's gonna be the square root of 17. And that's your answer. So once you get fast at this, which is really what you need to be able to do, if you see a question like this on the SAT, no more than 30 seconds. You wanna get this like done fast. That's right, thank you. So I'm gonna jump. So if you guys need help with that, um, you guys can watch the video. I have other videos up, but if you need more help, please let me know. So I'm gonna to jump to problems that are not special triangle based now. These are not special triangle based. So for this problem, let's go ahead and draw it out. Again, as you can tell, I'm always drawing these triangles out. So please do that also. The reason why is because I need to write on this triangle. I need to draw some arrows on it so my brain can make sense of what I'm doing. Please don't think that you can just see this and just do it all on your calculator. If you, if you try doing that, you're bound to get answers wrong. Okay, so they want us to solve for TV. So TV is in this corner. So to be able to solve for these non-special triangles, we are gonna use our trig ratios. And hopefully you memorize them by now. I know some kids haven't done so yet, but remember sine is opposite over hypotenuse because you wanna stay away from sin. Cosine is your buddy, that's why it's adjacent over hypotenuse. These are both hypotenuse problems. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. It's just sine over cosine. Okay. So the way we solve these problems, you look for one, something you are finding. What are you looking for? And two, something you know. I'm looking for the question mark. Now, given the angle 49, would that be considered the opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse? So go ahead and label this triangle. Which one is the opposite, which one is the adjacent, and which one is the hypotenuse? If you want, do the hypotenuse first. That's always easy. 
this is my hypotenuse is the eight. Well, the question mark is on the opposite side of the 45, 40, 90 degree angle I'm using. And adjacent looks right like it's right next to you. Look, it's right next to 49. Hey, buddy. Nice to be neighbors. So we pick a choice. We take for what we're looking for, which is apparently my opposite. And we know the hypotenuse. Please look at this trig ratio to the right. Which of these have opposite and hypotenuse? I'm going to go ahead and highlight that for you guys. Well, sine has opposite and hypotenuse. Cosine only has hypotenuse. And tangent only has opposite. I'm looking for opposite and hypotenuse. That's what I'm looking for. Turns out that's sine. So we just write that identity. Sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. I write that out. And we can fill in the blank. My theta is 49 degrees. Sine of 49 is equal to opposite x over 8. So the main goal is to be able to set up this trig ratio. I shouldn't use my calculator. I should just set it up. Now to solve for x, I'm going to multiply 8 to both sides. I'm going to use a different pen color. I'm going to multiply 8 to both sides. And the, when I do this, it becomes 8 sine of 49. And guess who is alone? X. X is alone. And that's what we want to solve for. That means everything else needs to go into a calculator. Here we go. Let's take out a calculator. Hopefully there won't be an advertisement. All right, no advertisement. I'm going to type 8 times 49 sine, because this is sine, equals, and x is equal to 6.03. 6.03 probably four, because I'm rounding up. But let me go ahead and go back and show the question. The question says, round to the nearest tenth. So round to the nearest tenth. So this is really 6.0. That's what they want. Is it exactly 6.0? No, this is an approximate number. 6.0. Let's see if it's going to give me a right answer or wrong answer. Ready? Three, two, one. Oh, yeah. So let's go back to the problem on our right. We said this was going to be 6.0. Now, what about the adjacent here? How would I find the adjacent? Well, that's adjacent. Find out, pick something you don't know, and pick something that you know. I don't know adjacent. I do know hypotenuse. Adjacent hypotenuse, that's going to be cosine. So right here, cosine of 49 degrees is equal to adjacent. I don't know what that is. Call, we'll call that uh, little baby t over hypotenuse, which is 8. Oh, it's a little ugly. Maybe write it. Cosine, whoops. Cosine of 49 is equal to little baby t over 8. And then we solve it just like this last problem that we did. Multiply 8 to both sides is equal to t. And to do this problem, I want to break out my calculator. If you guys have your calculator right now, you always want to make sure you're typing in the correct way. 8 times 49 cosine equals, and we end up with 5.24. Rounding up, it'll be 5.2. Now we know 5.2. We know all three sides of the triangle. And to find the third angle, we just subtract from 90. 90 minus 49 is equal to 41 degrees. We not only know all three angles now, but we also know all three sides. Let's go ahead and do the next problem. Let's go ahead and plug that in. Six, cross our fingers. Oh no, 6.3, when I make a mistake. Let me just copy something. 49, let me try that again. 
we said eight times, oh, let me clear it. How about that? Eight times um, 49 sine equals, hmm, that's kind of weird. Uh oh. What in the world? This is a different problem. How come this is angle 25? What? Zero. Hmm? If you look at this problem, zero. they changed the problem on me. Wasn't this 49? You already put in the answer. Oh. <laughs> oh, Mr. Kell's getting old. Okay, let's do another one. Sorry about that. Okay. So, Thanks for telling me I already did the problem. Okay, so they want me to find CE, find this corner here. So we know this is the right triangle. Do we have three bits of information? Well, I see a four, I see a right angle, and I see 27. That's three bits of information. We can solve this triangle, we can dox it. Maybe I shouldn't use the word dox. Dox seems like a cruel attack. So given 27 degrees, we know four is the opposite adjacent or hypotenuse. Four is on the opposite side of the angle, so that's going to be opposite. Um, I'm looking for hypotenuse, and I'm also looking for adjacent. But the problem is specifically asking for hypotenuse. Okay, pick something we don't know and pick something that we know. We don't know the hypotenuse, but we know the opposite. Which of these have hypotenuse and opposite? Here's the hint. Whenever you hear the word opposite, consider sign. Because you want to stay away from sin, guys. So I'm going to write sine of 27 is equal to 4 over, I don't know, hypotenuse. So I'm going to use a variable there. We could call it uh, maybe D, little baby D. So here is this trick. Does anybody, actually, you know what? Can you guys tell me what the trick is? Does anyone remember what the trick is to, to move X? So it's on top now. Multiply x to both sides. You can do that. So you're going to go the fancy, like long way. I'll take it. Or multiply by its reciprocal. Yeah, that's all fancy. See, so we have x sine of 27 equals to four. No longer a fraction. And then you would divide by sine of 27 x is equal to 4 over sine of 27. Now, I had a cheating trick. If you had x on the bottom of this fraction, I just told you guys to swap. Swap these. And we would end up with 4 over sine of 27. Same answer. Okay. So for these easy set of problems, just swap it, and that would work. And that's really all the work you need to show to save time. If you take the SAT, you, you got to swap it. If you're unsure, fine. Take your steps, like what we did here. That is 100% correct. Okay, calculator work. Let's go take a look at the calculator. Clear it. So f instead of 4 times sign, we would say 4 divide by 27 sine. And then I have to equals. Let me write that out. 4 divided by 27 sine. And then you must hit equals at the end to mix the numbers together. And I see 8.81. 8.81. Now, does this look like it could be 8.81? Does this look, this hypotenuse, 8.81? Well, yeah. It looks like it's pretty large compared to the 4 I know. If this was a 36 to 90, that would have been double the short side. Yeah. They want us to say round to nearest 10. So I'm going to round it to 8.8. Okay, 8.8. Here we go. You great job. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, if I want to solve for this other side here, see how that's adjacent? So we know adjacent and opposite 
what's adjacent and opposite? Whether that be sine, cosine, or tangent, adjacent and opposite. This would be tangent. It's not adjacent over opposite. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So let's go to set up our problem. Opposite over adjacent. Tangent of angle 24 is equal to opposite side. Sorry, up in the picture, opposite would have been 4 over adjacent. Call this y, whatever variable you feel comfortable with. So variable on the bottom, what was the trick I told you guys? Swap. Thank you, swap it. And all of a sudden, we have calculator moves. So we swap it. Can we swap seats? So y is equal to, let's use our calculator. 4 divided by, oh, make sure you clear it. Some reason clear it, it messes up. 4 divided by 24 tangent hit equals 8.98. 8.98. What? Does that make any sense? 27 pounds. Oh, shoot. 27. That's why it didn't make any sense. Thank you. 27. 27. That's why it didn't make any sense. Okay, real quick. I want to show you guys a, um, a learning, something that I want to make sure I caught. When I wrote 8.98, if I wrote 8.98 here, would this triangle make sense? 4, 8.81, and 8.98. Can someone tell me why this triangle is broken? Why would this triangle not work? And I noticed I made a mistake already. Here's my follow-up question. Which side of the triangle must be the largest in this Hi. right triangle? Would it be the hypotenuse? The hypotenuse has to be the biggest. But do you see my answer? The wrong answer messed up here? The wrong answer was, hey, 8.98. Well, doesn't the hypotenuse have to be the biggest side? So I know I messed up already. That's why I was like, Mr. Coe's broken. I knew it was the wrong answer because it was bigger than the hypotenuse. So that's when someone nicely told me that it was not 24, it was 27. Let's go ahead and rewrite this. Four divided by 27 tangent equals 7.85, rounding up to 7.9. Now, that makes so much more sense now, because it's not my largest side. It sure is bigger than the four, Let's figure out what this angle here should be. The other co, sorry, complementary angle, 27 minus 90. This would mean 63 degrees. So a big angle, big side, small angle, small side. Okay. All right, I'm gonna do any questions about these exercises here. So for these problems, they want us to go back and figure out what the angle would be. And this first problem is saying, what is the angle of H? And H is in this lower left-hand corner, triangle lower left-hand corner over here. So let's go ahead and write out, if I'm looking at angle H, what sides are given? So the side is adjacent and hypotenuse. Let's go to rewrite that out over here in our own little version. Five squared of 19 and 10 square root of 19. And H, this is my adjacent, this is my hypotenuse. Well, how is five and 10 related? Isn't that just double? Turns out, that's how we set it up. But you know what, doing the fast way is great. But what if I wanted to just use my calculator? Which you can, we would write, Adjacent and hypotenuse is cosine. Cosine of x, or let's call it h here, h is equal to 
cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. We can simplify that to become do, 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 1 over 2. And we practiced in class before. We're going to do what we call the inverse, cosine inverse to both sides. And this undoes the cosine, leaving me h by itself. So on your calculator, we have to write cosine inverse of 1 over 2. Now let's go ahead and we'll practice this on the calculator right now. In this case, we always do things backwards. We always do this inside first. So write 1 divided by 2 equals, and then we're going to hit cosine inverse. Now depending on your calculator, you might have to hit shift cosine. So 1 divided by 2 equals, and then we're going to hit shift cosine. In this case, the inverse is already written as a button. And angle 60 degrees. So h is equal to 60 degrees. Okay, let's do a problem that would be harder. I'm going to jump to a non-special triangle. This one looks like a special triangle because six is double, six is double three, but it's not. It's actually a trick question here. So they want us to find H, so let's go ahead and again draw out our example here. Again, again, I am always drawing these out. Six, three. Now, this is not my 369 triangle because double is always the hypotenuse, not that long side. So they want to find angle H. Let's call it H over here. Here's my H. So let's label the triangle now because I'm going to use my trig ratios to solve for this. 3 is on the opposite side, 6 is the adjacent, and hypotenuse is on this useless left side here. So opposite and adjacent, and I don't know my angle. So opposite adjacent would be sine, cosine, or tangent. Opposite adjacent is tangent. Tangent of H is equal to opposite over adjacent. So 10 H, oops, or oh, we can write that as equal to 1 half. Now how do I get rid of the word tangent? Because I'm trying to solve for H. We do the inverse to both sides. So if you want, you can skip this step and just write this. 10 inverse of 1 half. You can write that. Or if you want, you can take your time and write it out in your notes. And the 10s go away, and we're left with H. On our calculator, I'm going to type 1 divided by 2 equals, 1 divided by 2 equals, then we're going to undo our tangent, and tan inverse, and this equals to 26.6, I want to round up there, 26.6 rounding up. Okay. Let's try it, 26.6, come on, Whew. that was scary. I'm going to do one more of these problems for you. Let's use this one. So the triangle goes 7, 3, and they want us to find out angle U. What is this angle in the corner? So since it's not a special triangle, we're going to have to use our sine, cosine, or tangent, our trig ratio. Let's figure out what side is what. Hmm. This is my right angle, so opposite of U, that's my opposite, this is my adjacent. Hey, opposite adjacent, is that sine, cosine, and tangent? Opposite and adjacent. Let's see. Tangent of U is equal to opposite over adjacent. U is equal to tan inverse 
of 7 over 3. Sorry about that. So I'm going to type 7 divided by 3 equals, I'm going to inverse this. And we're at u is equal to 89.1 degrees. Whoops, what am I writing? Let's do this again. 7 divided by 3 equals, and then we said inverse 10. Oh my goodness, I got the wrong answer here. 66.8. Try it again. 7 divided by 3 equals, I'm going to inverse 10 this. Yeah, 66.8. I wrote the wrong answer the first time. I'm glad I double checked. Sixty-six point eight. Cross our fingers. Woo! That was scary. All right. So these are examples of solving for sides and angles. Um, if you guys need some more examples, uh, you guys can watch the videos. I did fix the videos, and I'll post this one up. Okay. You guys are going to work on M dot thirteen today.